Sisters, thanks for coming to watch another video today. So this video is going to be my um, 2015, setting up your planner for 2015 part two, the spiral bound. So um, it's taken me a while to put this up. I did get a new puppy, so I will be showing you that in a vlog soon if you're interested. I'm kind of working on something there. But first, let's just start off with um, some of the tips and tricks that I have for setting up your spiral bound planner for 2015. And we're going to start off first with my smallest planner. So this is a Sugar Paper LA planner from Target. They come out with these limited edition ones every um, quarter. I'm sure you've seen these before if you watch my other videos or if you watch pretty much any type of video on YouTube lately. So let's just get into what I've done. First of all, when you open this planner, you see the 2015 planner page and what I have already done is kind of set up a couple of things for January's month at a glance so for these I just kind of blocked off a couple of the days that are relevant or that I have break I actually have break on these days and then I also filled in a couple things that are already happening and then I filled in a couple things here as well that are already happening. But one of the things that I did to customize this smaller one, because this one here is going to be in my purse at all times, on the go with me, um, when I don't have my bigger planners with me. So even if I were to take my bigger planner out of my purse, this would still be in my purse at all times. And what I did was I actually took a plain old um, set of graph paper. And what I did was I went ahead and cut out the pages to size. So I, I took out a context page, the one that went in front of this one, I took it out, then I took graph paper, measured it, cut it around, hole punched them according to the way that these were hole punched. And then what I did was I cut slits on the side and I just went ahead and put them in. So this is gonna be standard for anything that I'm really entering into my um, spiral bound planners. That's gonna be standard. I'm basically gonna be doing that same method each time. But what I did, and I won't put that in now, it's a little finicky, is I created some pages here for me to take quick notes. So even though this may not be my set planner for notes, I still have a page that I can jot down just notes that I don't really need to make, you know, into a big deal and I just jot them down and then I have that for on the go. So there's one little piece of info and the reason why I didn't do that in my bigger planner here, which is the next one, is because this one has notes in the back. So this one already has a note section so I don't need to enter that there but what that was for what this thing here was mentioned for is if your planner and I know some of them don't doesn't come with note pages all you have to do is do the same method there and then go ahead and um, put those in so there's one tip for you the second tip I have here is with my bigger planner so let me show you an example with my personal planner, which I've also personalized in, a, in my own way, I'll show you that in a second, it has a top loading envelope. Now, while you can use whatever type of material you want to make your top loading, I had these on hand. And what these are, these are really big 8x11 top loading envelopes. And they have, they're this, the, they are the Avery brand. And these are for big papers. What I did was I did the same standard thing that I mentioned before. All I did was take out one of the context pages as my, um, kind of like as a pattern, and I lined it up on the side and cut around it. And then all I did was hole punch them according to my pattern. And so what I did was I took some washi tape just to make it a little bit more sturdy on the side, cut holes again, and then I have my very own top loading envelope where I'm going to keep different list pads that I might need just for that particular moment. And I don't really want to put as um, a permanently into my planner. So I have there a top loading envelope. And then I have also begun 
um, planning for 2015 in my January spread. So here are a couple ways that I plan. So first of all, I use these masking stickers, as I've mentioned before in there, as um, ways to remind myself of bills or different very important things like times I have a test. And then what I also did was I used some different colors here. Here, like I have pink and then I have, um, I think this is just pen, um, just to show me what that is related to. So that's related to school. But instead of making it that color, what I did was I just put a little dot and so I know that's related to school. There's a couple ways you can bookmark your pages. For me, I always like using these. These are just little Avery tabs that you cut down and you stick here and you can write whatever you want on them. This one's a little bit dirty, but if you wanted to go ahead and enter one, Anything, anything really. This is a Project Life card that I got from Michaels. And you can see that, first of all, I cut it down to size. So it's cut down. And then it's also, I'm going to do the same thing that I did for my page. I am just going to use my pattern to cut them, to cut punch holes in there, and then just go ahead and enter it into my spiral bound so that when I do put it in there, I will have something just like that there on the top. And here's a great perfect example of what I was talking about with the Project Life dividers. As you can see here, I just took a Project Life divider, cut it down, and for the Erin Condren, all you have to do is put these little clips right there, and you have your own divider that you can see when you close your page. And then also here, you can use really cute paper clips to um, keep your pages as well that are kind of sticking out. So if you're interested in a bookmark, that's also something. Another thing I forgot to mention because it was hiding here is either in your small planner or even in your bigger planner, what you can do is you can go to filofaxi.com and I've done, I've mentioned filofaxi in a couple of my videos before, but you can go there and you can print out a 2015 pull out year. And so you're gonna want to print print out the size. So for this one, this is a personal size. And while it may not fit perfectly, I might just want to cut a little bit up there, cut a little bit more down here. So December's cut off a little bit more. And then you can see that when I do use my pattern, it will fit. And I will be able to pull out my year out of my smaller planner or my bigger planner. So if I have my bigger planner, all I have to do is print out an A5 size paper Filofaxi printout put it in there and then I'll have my pull out year. So that is something that you can do as well for your for a little bit more planning. Another spiral bound planner that I have is a personal planner. So to, another way to set up your spiral bound planner is to put your own pocket in it. So you can see I had a top loading envelope, but now I have a pocket here. So what I did with this pocket is I took this clear looking thing that I got from a folder. It was just kind of like a top to the folder. And what I did there was I did the same thing. I cut little slits in it, just like that. As you can see, it comes all the way out. But at the bottom, I went ahead and washi taped it to a page that's already in the planner. So I went ahead and washi taped it down there so that when I stick my papers in there and I close it up, I have my own pocket that I can stick things in. Another thing I like to do is, I'm just covering up some notes. Another thing that I like to do is in the back of my planners, I like to take, if you don't have a note section in your planner, which this one does, but I didn't want to use the paper yet, um, all you have to do is get your list pad, use your cutout, and all you have to do is go ahead and stick it back there. And you have some more note paper in the back. Okay, here's another one. Here's the Erin Condren. And with the Erin Condren, I also created um, my own um, envelope in here. So what I did was I went to the store and I got these Avery... No, these are, I believe, Martha Stewart. Yeah, Martha Stewart for Avery envelopes. And what I did was I just cut down the side that had the holes. I put my um, Erin Condren clips on there and I sized it down so that when it, here at the bottom, I was able to put washi tape so that it would stick together. And then I had my own envelope in the front some of you are saying, well, there's an envelope in the back, and that's true, but this is kind of more for um, quick access to any note papers that I have, such as this that I want to stick in and out of the planner. 
So there are just some tips and tricks on how I would set up my spiral bound planner. Like I said, it's not all in one planner. It's just kind of like different things from each planner that you can um, utilize and you can put into your spiral bound planner. I hope you enjoyed the tips and tricks and I will see you in my next video. Happy planning!